Ben Meyer. And I'm Rob Wright. And this week we wanted to talk a little bit about the potential takeover of Take-Two Interactive by EA. EA made an unsolicited bid for Take-Two about a month ago for about $2 billion, which was rejected swiftly by the Take-Two board. They re-upped that offer slightly last week, but it was still rejected. And uh, Take-Two is saying, hey, wait, 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 we're going to wait until after Grand Theft Auto 4 comes out at the end of the month before we do anything. And uh, in the meantime, we're going to we're going to look and see if, if there are any other offers out there Smart that would move. be good for a Smart move. But what Rob and I were thinking about and talking about was, what does this mean for gamers if this deal goes through? Um, is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? Uh, I'll put it to you, Rob. What, what do you think? Yeah, I, I don't know if it's a good thing. I, I think it might be a bad thing, but I also think it might be an, a sort of an inevitable thing, which we'll touch on later. But I think, you know, if you, if you look at EA's history, and you look at their track record with acquisitions, it's not very flattering. Uh, and people still remember what happened with Westwood Studios, Origin Systems, Bullfrog Productions. I mean, just ask people like Richard Garriott and uh, Peter Molyneux about, you know, what it's like to be acquired by EA. I mean, these studios were kind of in their prime when they were bought up by EA. They had huge fan followings, and they, they had great titles, great franchises. And, and these, a lot of these games are just unceremoniously dumped and canceled and just kind of faded to black, and they're no longer supported. And, you know, Westwood Studios, Command & Conquer, it's, it's still supported. It's still out. That, you know, Command & Conquer 3, very good. Kane's Wrath is out. But, you know, it, it, I don't think if you ask many PC gamers, like, hey, what do you think of, of Command & Conquer these days, they're not going to think it's as good as a, the series once was during its heyday pre-EA. So... I think you have to really take that into account when you look at what might happen if Take Two becomes part of EA. Another thing you got to look at is track record with MMOs hasn't been the greatest. I mean, they did, you know, EA bought Origin Systems. They canceled Ultima Online 2 at that time. Ultima was sort of the reigning fantasy MMO, uh, you know, kind of the granddaddy. And um, yeah, they don't, they, they, they don't seem that big on MMOs. And so, uh, anybody that was kind of hoping for a Grand Theft Auto themed MMO, which we were, which we talked about in a previous video, um, you know, I, I wouldn't get your hopes uh, very high, you know, if EA does get, a, get go through with this, this bid. So, yeah, I mean, I think, I think those are two things you, you definitely have to consider. One other, one other point is that, uh, and a lot of analysts have been mentioning this, is with the sports franchises, uh, for any of you sports gamers out there, it, you know, this would essentially give EA a monopoly over the sports franchises, 2K being the only competitor really left in that regard. Yeah. And, you know, having... Basically, monopoly generally doesn't bode well for the end consumer, and, and I would argue that since they got an exclusive contract on Madden in 2004, I don't think Madden has gotten a lot better. Yeah, so yeah. I, I don't know that that would necessarily be good for gamers as well. Yeah, and then that's a, another great point to bring up, but just uh, about how EA has kind of gotten in a rut recently, and uh, they've been criticized just for kind of churning out title after title, sequel after sequel of their of their big franchises, The Sims and the sports franchises like Madden, and, and you just, you know, essentially the same title year after year, and uh, not a lot of originality, not a lot of uh, new blood and, 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 and fresh content, and um, they've been criticized for that, and perhaps rightfully so, and you kind of wonder if Take-Two is, you know, does become part of EA what might happen to stuff like, you know, Grand Theft Auto? Are we just going to see expansion packs for the next, you know, seven, eight, nine years where it's the same game kind of over yes. and over again? Probably. <laughs> and would they sell a lot? They, yeah, they're going to sell a lot. But, you know, how long can that last? I yeah. mean, that, that's something to consider. And I, I think lastly, you know, when we talk about what the effect might be for gamers, I mean, it's really important to remember just, you know, the, the PC gaming fan... Uh, their memory is, 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 is long, and they still remember, you know, kind of what happened with some of those studios that were bought up by EA, like Westwood and uh, Origin Systems. And I think if you ask the average gamer, you know, a console gamer about EA, they probably won't have many complaints. They probably don't know as much about sort of the backstory there. But if you ask PC gamers, I think they're, I think they're really bitter about what, you know, some of the things that have gone on with uh, those acquisitions and they don't really have a whole lot of goodwill in that PC gaming crowd. And I wonder, just might that lead them, then lead EA to sort of pull back from the PC gaming uh, uh, market and just kind of focus more on, on, on consoles, which is a bigger moneymaker for them anyways. 
They it's haven't. Just, they haven't started doing that already. Well, yeah, I guess maybe they have, but it, it's definitely something to consider if this does happen. You know, would that accelerate? Sure. So. Sure. And I, you know, it makes me think about would Bioshock exist in a combined EA Take Two? You know, two years down the road, an original title like that with original IP. Great point. And, and uh, it's it's kind of hard to imagine. On the other hand. Um, EA doesn't really do exclusives as much, so maybe we'd have Bioshock on the PS3. So that's you know there's there's some plus and minuses there. But, I guess, but uh, yeah. small small consolation yeah. uh, for concerned PC gamers. Yeah. So stepping back away from the gamers, yeah. um, is this deal good for oh. EA for Take Two? It's great, and it's a great deal. I mean, they had to do something. A lot of people were wondering what. Take Two was going to do after Activision uh, and uh, Vivendi Blizzard got together. I mean, just a huge bombshell that combines, you know, those franchises: StarCraft, Warcraft, Diablo, Call of Duty, uh, and, and Guitar Hero. Um, you know, everybody was looking for Take Two, or um, rather, EA to do something. And there have been rumors that they were looking at Take Two for a long time. So this is just kind of sort of a natural evolution. And I definitely think it's a great move for both. I mean, EA definitely needs to get, first of all, they need to get more M-rated content because they've largely shied away from M-rated content in the past. And what better M-rated content than Grand Theft Auto? Mm -hmm. But it's also good for Take-Two because despite all the success that they've had recently with Grand Theft Auto, they've had their financial ups and downs. Sure. They've, they've gone through some you know, some uh, roadblocks and some speed bumps there, especially with, with the, sort of the uh, situation with Rockstar and a lot of the criticism that they've come under in recent years. So, you know, I definitely think that, that it's, it's a great deal. It benefits both companies, and it, especially if uh, Take-Two can get them up their offer a little bit and yeah. get more money. Yeah, you know, it, it, the, if EA doesn't shutter some of these smaller studios that, uh, that Take-Two has, uh, it could actually be good for them because they don't have to wait for the GTA cash cow to like take a sigh of relief that they're going to be able to develop their game fully. Um, but only time will tell. And uh, you know, I think at the end of the day, the consolidation in this industry is just going to keep happening. Yeah. Um, and and even beyond game publishers, uh, you know, the bigger media companies are getting involved now too. There was reports of uh, Paramount, a division of Viacom, sure. made a big gaming-related uh, development uh, deal. And uh, so I think that's going to keep happening one way or the other. So if it's if not now, probably later. Probably down the road. Yeah, you're right. But that's all the time we have for this week. I'm Ben Meyer. And I'm Rob Wright. And we'll see you again next time.